What's going on dudes and dudettes? So USC the other day this week got a commitment from a 2023 player from California, Cade Eldridge. I believe he's gonna be either playing the tight end slash H-back position. So he is a tight end that's athletic enough to even line up in the backfield if you need him to. So it'll be pretty interesting to see how they use that position. That's gonna be new to USC fans overall, but hopefully he's a good enough player. I know that's not one of the main tight ends they were looking at, especially this past couple weekends, but maybe we'll get those guys as well. Then when it comes to Duke basketball, yes, just this morning, they did finally set up their ACC slash Big Ten matchup. They're usually part of this little mini competition right at the beginning of the season to have both those conferences face each other. And this year they get to play Ohio State. I forget if they played Michigan State last year because I know they played Ohio State last year, but I don't think it was part of the challenge. I could be wrong because I know they played at Ohio State, but... This fall, they will be hosting Ohio State, so that'll be a little bit easier, especially because two of their best players from last year got drafted last night or were in the draft, so they won't be there. So hopefully that's a victory for John Shire, the new head coach. And a quick happy birthday. I don't, I don't usually do happy birthdays, but this guy is obviously the main reason why I started liking Duke in the first place. J.J. Reddick's birthday is today, so congrats to him been doing a lot of good stuff especially for ESPN I thought <clears throat> he might have gotten eaten alive by like Stephen A. Smith on first take and all this stuff but he's been doing very well holding his own always getting invited back always doing other stuff on ESPN on those shows as well and his podcast is still doing really good getting a lot of a lot of really good people whether it's players now or ex-players even Stephen A. of ESPN was on there as well so getting a lot of high caliber stuff so good to him overall in his career right now <clears throat> then ex-USC player he didn't really play for USC because he had a whole investigation but he still considers himself an ex-USC player DeAnthony Melton who was with the Memphis Grizzlies as of last night but then got pretty much included in this trade with Philadelphia for some draft picks and stuff so he will be on the 76ers now so that's pretty interesting for him don't know if he's gonna get a lot more playing time or not, they do might they might need some help on that guard spot, especially the shooting guard area. So hopefully he does get some run later this year, but you just never know with some of these trades. They usually it's just for money to be able to sign somebody else. Then a USC wide receiver who's on the roster right now, Michael Jackson the third, who is from Nevada. He is he did have a NIL deal he announced the other day, but it is one of those weirder new ones that is included with like the NFTs. I don't know what they really are. I know it's some type of like digital file or picture or art piece or whatever it is. It could be anything really digital and somehow you keep that to yourself. You bought it or you invest in it. I don't know what it is, but he's somehow got himself mixed in with that stuff, which is pretty cool, I guess, because it's helping him make money. So that's pretty good for a guy who hasn't really Started at USC and probably won't for the next year or two, so that's big, a big deal for him, pretty much. And then, yes, I like the first My Big Fat Greek Wedding a lot, like everybody. The second one was kind of just all right. And then they just recently said that they're starting production on the third one, which is kind of surprising, but I think I remember them mentioning that a couple years ago, actually, maybe around the pandemic. But I wonder how it's going to work out, because I know the father in that movie passed away within the last year or so so it's gonna be pretty interesting to see how they do that i like the first one so i am going to check out the trilogy in the end but hopefully it's a good one i think they're going to greece this time which will be the first time it's pretty cool in my opinion then an ex nfl player tony the goose siragusa died the other day i think at the age 55 it's definitely an even higher age range that he expected. He didn't even expect him to get that high age just because a lot of stuff that he's done in his life, not only to play football, but even his father had passed away in his arms and stuff. It is a pretty crazy interview with him and Howard Stern when he was on there promoting a book. He learned a lot of stuff about him and then even doing stuff like he wasn't able to use the restroom. So he was taking like enemas and all this stuff during a football game. and actually sharded himself during a football game and collapsed and it's just crazy what he had to go through just to even get
get on there because he was he wasn't drafted. He had a fight for every single year he was in the NFL. Played with quite a bit of teams: Baltimore, Indianapolis Colts. I believe he won the championship with the Ravens, in my, if I'm remembering correctly. But yeah, it's great overall life he had. Just sucks he had to go early because he was like you know a sideline for Fox Sports. It was always cool to see him, especially the past couple years. But yes, he will be sadly missed. Then the Lakers made. A little bit of noise right before the the NBA draft last night, a couple hours before they made a pretty quick trade with the Orlando Magic, who had multiple second round picks. So it's kind of an easy team to target because they probably weren't going to keep all those players anyways. But they made a trade for a future. Yeah, the Lakers are sending a 2028 second round pick to Orlando and some cash, I guess, for them to use this year for the number 35 overall pick in last night's draft. It was a pretty high pick. It's like right after the first round. So usually around there you could get a pretty good solid quality player. So we'll see what the Lakers get. But getting on to the bigger news of the draft was that the number one pick ended up <clears throat> being Paolo Banquero of Duke, who pretty much everybody for the draft said he was the third person in line after Chet Holmgren of Gonzaga and Jabari Smith Jr. of Auburn. They just felt that those two guys are going to be way better pros, so he was always selected third to Houston, which would have been a good fit, but it's even better he's going to Orlando, in my opinion, because they already have a couple of good quality guards that are older and that are set up, and he's going to be reuniting with a Duke player in Wendell Carter Jr., who was selected really high in the draft as well when he came out, so that would be pretty cool. For them to be teammates as well, they look like a pretty stacked young team. They're probably going to make some noise in the Eastern Conference because it's always easier because it's always top heavy. There's always like four or five teams that are really good there and then everyone else pretty much sucks and beats up each other. But overall, that's pretty cool. And then I believe the stat was they now have the most number one overall picks Duke has since like the common draft era has started like the 80s or something it was. And he was the fourth number one overall pick. Elton Brand was number one in 1999. Uh, Kyrie Irving, I forget that year. He, he was number one, he was 08. And then Zion Williamson, obviously 2019, I believe that was. And now Paolo Moncaro. So yes, a couple guys who were supposed to be generational type. Elton Brand was pretty good. He's in the front office right now. For Philadelphia, I believe he's still there. And Kyrie Irving is still playing. Zion, he hopefully he's healthy enough to play next year because he was a pretty good beast while he was healthy. But yeah, it's pretty crazy that now they have the record. Hopefully it can't continue next year because they have a lot of quality players coming in this fall that are freshmen that are going to be pretty talented as well. Then the other Duke player, Mark Williams, the center, ended up getting selected at number 15 to the Charlotte Hornets, which I was surprised that they went with, because Charlotte had just picked a center at number 13, but that trade, that player got traded to some other team, I think to Detroit at the time. So ended up working out for him. He lost maybe a million or two on his contract, but it's not too bad overall getting picked by the same team. And he's also gonna be playing with another ex suit player and Mason Plumley as well, who as of this second is still on the team, but he has a nice contract that he might get traded as well. So you never know, but yes, as of right now, there's two Dukes on the Charlotte Hornets team, which is pretty nice. And then the very next pick, number 16, the Atlanta Hawks selected AJ Griffin, the other ex Duke small forward slash shooting guard. Yeah, it was pretty crazy to see that it happened. I didn't think uh, he would get selected right there because he was always projected as a top 10 Which I didn't really believe anyways and a lot of those teams. I didn't think they were really gonna go for that Position, but they did because he was considered the best three-point shooter that was still left on the the board So why not go with him and he's also reuniting with another <laughs> ex Duke player and Jalen Johnson Who was a pretty high pick first round for the Atlanta Hawks a couple years ago as well So that's pretty awesome Congrats to both those guys being on the same team. And then my favorite, <clears throat> Wendell Moore Jr., who obviously had a love-hate relationship with him, but he ended up getting drafted by Dallas. I think it was 25, 26, I forget the exact number, but it was still in the first round, which is really cool. But then he quickly got traded 
to the Minnesota Timberwolves. So not a bad situation. I thought he was going to be playing with my favorite NBA player right now, Luka, but at least he won't you know, stop his career from going forward. At least he'll go with Minnesota, who's an up-and-coming team and might make a big trade or two in the near future. But congrats to him. Then we lead into the Lakers pick at number 35, finally. They're on the board. I thought they might trade back because this is a pretty good pick. So whoever has, whichever team has two picks behind them, they could easily get and then add two solid players if they wanted to later in the draft because they did pick up a lot of good undrafted free agents. But luckily they were able to still pick up those guys and get this guy from Michigan State in Max Christie, who... I knew about he was a freshman he was okay not great his three-point percentage was actually pretty low so I was kind of surprised they still went with them but in the workouts and what they saw they believe that he has a good shooting stroke which they can work with and help him become an even better three-point shooter pretty athletic has good enough size to be that three and D wing player so it's a lot of Good positive stuff about him. I didn't see much of it at Michigan State. He wasn't their best player, but he did have to play for a tough coach and Tom Izzo, which everybody seems to be talking about. So he must be pretty good, I guess. We'll have to wait and see. They did say that if he were to go back to school this year and come out next season, he would have been like a top 20 pick. So maybe that's a positive thing. He could develop within the next couple years to a good rotational player for the Lakers. You never know, but... Yeah, overall, we'll see what this kid can do. Not going to push to see something great. It'll be fun to see him in the next week or two at the Summer League in Vegas when he's playing with the Lakers, especially with a lot of these guys that are playing, but we'll get to those guys later. Then another ex-Duke player, Trevor Keels, was selected in the draft to the New York Knicks at number 42. And yeah, I was surprised. I thought this, trade, this was, pick was going to get traded as well, but... Yes, he is luckily going to the Knicks and also reuniting with R.J. Barrett, the guy who went number three overall from Duke to New York a couple years ago in that Zion Williamson draft. So pretty cool. Once again, Duke players reuniting. Obviously, these teams are finally getting it to add more, more and more Duke players to their team. So you could be productive, which is pretty good. And then after that, Duke, for their own school program, like a little... Thing they were able to pass was or a record they were able to break was five players drafted in the entire draft which is pretty cool for their program i know that 2019 team were zion cam reddish rj barrett and i'm sorry i'm forgetting the last guy who was drafted but that was four they have like four times there were four duke players drafted but this is the first time five players were and we were getting worried for keels because it's like he, uh, we thought we were hearing late first, early second, and it was kind of like in the middle of the second round where he was drafted, but it's a nice situation for him. He, he definitely would have benefited coming back for another year and getting drafted higher, in my opinion, but overall, it's what these players are hearing from their agents or other teams and making up their own decisions, so good luck to him either way. And then pretty soon after that, at number 49, Isaiah Mobley of USC was selected to the Cleveland Cavaliers, which is pretty cool in its own right because last season, Cleveland selected his younger brother, <clears throat> Evan Mobley, at the number three overall selection. So now they have reunited as they were at USC, but now they're going to be reunited in Cleveland, which is pretty cool. It's just, they're just missing their father, who was the assistant coach at USC, who, who actually still is. But if he gets on there, that'll be pretty cool to have all the Mobley family together. But yeah, it's pretty cool to see him reunite with his younger brother. It's awesome. And then the one lone Duke player that was not drafted, who was eligible in this draft, Theo John, the center. He went undrafted, but he did quickly sign with a favorite uh, team of his in the Minnesota Timberwolves. I know he tweeted about it. That it, this was a very nice destination for him. And I think, I don't know if he's from there exactly, but I think it might have been a favorite team of his. So hopefully that's good enough encouragement for him to make the team. So good luck to him. And then the Lakers made three selections or three pickups actually right after the draft. I'm surprised that at least one of these guys wasn't selected. The first guy in Scottie Pippen Jr., who's obviously the son of the 
Chicago Bulls great that played with Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, but he is a lot smaller, so he's like a little over six foot, plays the point guard position for Vanderbilt, and just showed that he could totally ball out, especially scoring wise, and during the workouts for the Lakers, he showed that he could play some defense and with some tenacity and ferociousness, so luckily they were able to get him and sign him to a two-way deal, so he's on the Lakers for at least a couple of years. And then they ended up using their other two-way deal on a 6'9 forward from Syracuse named Cole Swider. Didn't really know much about him. I know Buddy Beheim, all those other guys were a little bit more known. But um, what's their name? Syracuse was a little bit better at shooting the three this year. And this guy was probably one of the other reasons why because this is pretty much why Palenka and a lot of the other people were talking about him after the draft saying that they needed more shooting and being able to spread the floor with a bigger player obviously at 6'9 and he could shoot the three ball very well so hopefully he's a good enough player he was good enough for them to use a two-way contract most of these guys probably won't stay on the two-way contract because they might be too good in my opinion I think like a Scotty Pippen Jr. will be too good to not put him on the main roster and sign him to a real deal and then use that two-way on another guy. You never know, but the main and last guy that they picked up so far that we know of, who they actually invited to their team, so they weren't able to give him a full guaranteed contract, but they invited him to play on their team in Vegas was Shaquille O'Neal's son, Sharif O'Neal, which is pretty cool because he went to UCLA, didn't work out from there, went to Shaq's old school and LSU played there for a year showed some signs but never really you know blew up to popularity as he thought he was going to and he did have like a I think it was right before college he had like a heart surgery or something like that some type of heart scare or medical scare so he did work back from that and he's able to play now and even Shaq wanted him to stay one more year most likely to get his degree or diploma and all this stuff but he wanted to come out and sadly he didn't get drafted but he has a chance to work with his team that he loved growing up and always talked about when he was in the workout for the Lakers how he grew up watching Kobe and his father play together and win championships so he's just grateful for the opportunity to be able to maybe make the roster and do that build up continue his dad's legacy that his dad built with the Lakers so I'm definitely happy to hear that so yeah overall it's a lot of crazy stuff happening i'm sure there's more trades of whether guys i like usc or duke gonna be on the move but you never know just want to get this video out and it's already around 18 minutes so i'm gonna stop talking thanks for watching people like subscribe comment down below let me know what y'all think have a great rest of your day fight on go duke